The Caribbean Cultural Center African Diaspora Institute presents The Color of Power, Heroes, Sheroes, and Their Creators. Hello, my name is Edgardo Miranda Rodriguez, and I am the guest curator of this exhibition. While black and other communities of color have more recently gained representation in media and entertainment, a huge lack of diversity and portrayal of characters and stories that reflect the nuanced lives of our communities still persists. Furthermore, while there are an increased number of artists of color working behind the scenes to bring superheroes and superheroes to mainstream media and to create box office hits, they seldom reap the full rewards of their work. People have a wonderful fascination with superheroes. We reference them and consume products emblazoned with their images in our daily lives. Many of us recognize, celebrate, and see ourselves in their backstories, super strengths, and weaknesses. However, how often do these comic book characters, their narratives, or their creators reflect the actual diversity of the world in which we all live? How diverse are mainstream publishers who publish this content? Who owns these mainstream comic book characters? These questions and more are explored in the exhibition The Color of Power, Heroes, Sheroes, and Their Creators. On display, you will see comic book artists of color who have translated their commercial success to expand the creation of stories that celebrate the beauty and rich heritage of the African diaspora. Artists with roots in the Bahamas, Honduras, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, and the United States share their personal collection of art and powerful characters. Through this reflective exhibition, may the viewer capture an understanding of the superpowers which have always sustained our communities and cultures. This exhibition reflects the work that we are doing which goes beyond the mainstream industry and uplifts those stories and people with whom we grew up. We know true superheroes as similar as these characters. As the title indicates, I want to offer to visitors that the color which gives power to society's popular culture looks like ours. Let's show the world how we color and we'll show the world our power. We start our exhibition by honoring our ancestor, Harlem's very own Billy Graham. Billy Graham began his professional career in the comic book industry in 1969 when he was hired to work for Warren Publishing. This new position he took on would make him the first African-American art director in all of the comic book industry. In 1972, he left to start his career at Marvel, where he immediately began working on his new black exploitation influenced hero, Luke Cage. He infused his familiarity of New York City from Harlem through the theater district at 42nd Street into his comic book pages. After a celebrated run on Luke Cage, Hero for Hire, Marvel teamed up Graham with writer Don McGregor on the adventures of the Black Panther in the series Jungle Action, featuring the Black Panther. On exhibit for Billy Graham, we have a special collection of original comic book art, which was graciously on loan from Nicholas Catradis. The Billy Graham collection features art from the series Jungle Action featuring Black Panther 1974-1975. These pages not only capture the energy and power of the Black Panther, but one particular image of Kill Raven lifting up Black Panther can obviously be seen as the original reference material for director Ryan Coogler's film Black Panther. In this original piece of artwork, we see the image which was recreated on the silver screen. And here is the original image as it was, re as it was introduced in 1975's Jungle Action featuring Black Panther. Continuing the exhibition with Billy Graham's artwork, we see art from the series Luke Cage, Hero for Hire, 1972. And these are issues number three, number two, and number nine. Particular attention should be given to the page featuring one very recognizable character as was portrayed by Rosario Dawson on the Netflix series Luke Cage. This character as originally was presented Claire in the comic book series, she was actually a doctor, although in the television series she was portrayed as a nurse. 
The work that Billy Graham contributed to Marvel is very important to note as he was the first artist of African descent to actually illustrate these characters for Marvel, Luke Cage and Black Panther. However, it's very important to note that these characters, although as iconic and as identifiable with the African American community and beyond, were not actually created by artists or writers of color, particularly of African descent. Billy Graham, however, was the first artist of African descent to draw these characters. We continue our tour with the work of Sanford Green. Sanford Green has worked professionally in comic book illustration and related industries for over 15 years, including work for mainstream publishers Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, and Image Comics. His most recent work with Marvel series Black Panther, Luke Cage, Power Man, and Iron Fist have made him well known in the comic book scene, but his work in multi is multidimensional. Exploring his versatility as an artist and illustrator, this exhibition also features Green's newest series, Bitter Root, an epic tale about a family of monster hunters set in the Harlem Renaissance he co-created with David F. Walker and Chuck Brown. Bitter Root is the 1920s, the Harlem Renaissance is in full swing, and, the, and only the Sangarier family can save New York and the world from the supernatural forces threatening to destroy humanity. But the once great family of monster hunters has been torn apart by tragedies and conflicting moral codes. The Sangaye family must heal the wounds of the past and move beyond their differences or sit back and watch a force of unimaginable evil ravage the human race. Sanford Green teamed up with writers David F. Walker and Chuck Brown to create Bitter Root. This five-issue limited series originally debuted in late 2018 and concluded its five-issue run in early 2019. It was recently announced that the continuing series would be published in 2020. However, this initial five-issue run of Bitter Root received such critical acclaim and attention that it raised the awareness of filmmaker and notable director Ryan Coogler. Bitter Root would be made into a major motion picture. Unlike the work with Black Panther, which is owned by Marvel, which is also owned by Disney Studios, Bitter Root is actually owned by Sanford Green, David F. Walker, and Chuck Brown. This is an example of the empowering art that we are seeing as part of the color of power. Sanford Green's artwork is created from his hand, from his imagination, and he still owns the creative intellectual property and is part of the negotiation for creating the Mesha Motion Picture, which is currently in pre-production. What we see on exhibit is a large mural, which is an actual recreation of the five first issues of Bitter Root, as illustrated by Sanford Green. On the wall, all five covers have been seamlessly connected to one another to create an incredibly gorgeous, colorful mural of the Sangaye family. Over to the far right, on smaller frames, we actually see the original promotional image that announced the publication of Bitter Root, and this was released in 2018. Next to that image, we see the cover of the trade paperback. It's important to note the difference between a trade paperback and a graphic novel. A trade paperback is a hardcover or paperback collection of an ongoing series, a reproduction, a reprint. However, a graphic novel, which is also hardcover or oftentimes a paperback, is an original series in one book. Graphic novels can usually be anywhere from 60 to 300 pages long. Bitter Root was published by Image Comics, a publishing company which supports the work of what is referred to in the comic book industry as creator-owned properties. The creators of these series own their properties. Bitter Root is owned by Sanford Green, 
David F. Walker, and Chuck Brown. Next up is Nyla Magruder. Nyla Magruder is a writer and artist based in Los Angeles and the winner of the Dwayne McDuffie Award for Diversity. From her beginnings in the woods of the eastern United States, she developed an eternal love for three things, nature, books, and animation. She has written and storyboarded for television studios like DreamWorks and Disney. She also illustrates children's books, including the Dak to Hill Squad series by Daniel Jose Older from Scholastic. Nyla is also the author of MFK, a middle grade graphic novel from Inside Editions on how to find a fox, a picture book. She has published short fiction in the anthology All Out, edited by Sandra Mitchell. In Fireside Magazine and Marvel Rising, The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl and Vault of Spiders for Marvel. On exhibit, we have Nyla Magruder's MFK. MFK, a fantastic adventure following the story of Abby, a deaf girl with a mysterious power who is traveling across a vast desert to scatter her mother's ashes. In a world of sleeping gods, a broken government, and a fragile peace held in the hands of the corrupt, one youth must find the strength to stand up against evil and save humanity. The story is not about that youth. It's about Abby, who just wants to get to the mountain range called the Potter's Spine, scatter her mother's ashes, and then live out her life in sweet, blissful solitude. Unfortunately, everyone she meets wants to whine at her about their woes, tag along on her quest, arrest her for no reason, or blow her to bits. Journeys are hard on the social recluses of the world. Nala Magruder is what I lovingly love to refer to as a triple threat. In the comic book industry, given that it is created around deadline-oriented projects, Various authors take on different roles to achieve the publication of a comic book. You will start with an editor who may assign an idea or receive a draft from a writer. Once that script is finalized by the writer and editor, it is passed along to what is referred to as the first illustrator in the comic book production, a penciler. A penciler literally draws out sketches and final illustrations in pencil. The next artist to step into the project is the inker who takes the penciled artwork and completes the illustrations with ink. The next artist that steps into the project is the colorist who applies colors and these days these colors are applied digitally using such software as Adobe Photoshop and color is applied to the black and white inked artwork. The final artist oftentimes works in conjunction with the editor and even the writer. That artist is the letterer, the graphic designer that applies dialogue bubbles along with sound effects to complete the comic book page art itself. Nyla Magruder is one of the few artists that illustrates, pencils, colors, letters, and not only works within the comic book industry, but also works as a storyboard artist for such studios as DreamWorks and Disney, and also produces art for picture books. She's an incredibly accomplished artist, and we're very privileged to have Nyla Magruder as part of The Power of Color. We now come to the artwork of Ronald Wimberly. Ronald Wimberly is an artist who works primarily in design and narrative. He is also an accomplished cartoonist, having designed several graphic novels as well as shorter works for DC Vertigo, Nike, Marvel, Hill and Wang, and Dark Horse. On exhibition, we have from Ronald Wimberly his new independently published newspaper, Lab Magazine. Lab Magazine is an annual broadsheet art newspaper created and curated by Ronald Wimberly and fueled by counterculture, social criticism, and comics. On display is the cover of Lab Number 4, This Was Your Life. This issue takes on death itself, the end of days, and the meaning of horror in the Anthropocene, featuring the works of such luminaries as 
Emily Carroll, Ben Passmore, Sloane Long, Jonathan DeJob, Nkondo, Helen Jo, and Richie Pope. Its predecessor, Lab Number Zero, a searing Eisner-nominated treatise on the black body in science fiction, was referred to by the comics journal as a manifesto in action as ideologically charged and aesthetically incandescent as the arc of a Molotov cocktail caught in mid-flight. Also on exhibition, along with the cover artwork for Lob Magazine, is Black History in Their Own Words. This was part of a publication that Ronald Wimberly created for Image Comics. On exhibit, we actually see the art that illustrates historic figures from the African diaspora. The first artist that is, or rather, the first piece of art that is displayed it centers around a mini biography of sorts. The series is called Black History in Their Own Words because these figures are painted, illustrated alongside their own words. The first figure we see is that of Arturo Schomburg. The American Negro must remake his past in order to make his future. Arturo Schomburg. Beside Arturo Schomburg we have the portrait of Sojourner Truth. The rich rob the poor and the poor rob one another. The final portrait in the Black History in Their Own World series is that of Marsha P. Johnson. I may be crazy, but that don't make me wrong. The final piece in Ronald Wimberly's exhibition space is a page from his independently published graphic novel, Prince of Cats. Prince of Cats is an adaptation of the classic story written by William Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. This interpretation of the story is set in the 1980s in Brooklyn and all of the protagonists in the story are of African descent. It is important to note that while this exhibition was being produced and curated, it was announced that Prince of Cats would be developed into a major motion picture. This will be adapted and directed by notable filmmaker Spike Lee. Spike Lee will be collaborating with Ronald Wimberly on the screenplay for the film Prince of Cats. Similar to the work of Sanford Green, Bitter Root, Ronald Wimberly owns the rights to the graphic novel Prince of Cats. Therefore, when the negotiation came between the story and the film studio, they went directly to the owner of the art and the story. Ronald Wimberly. In an unprecedented move, Ronald Wimberly will be working alongside Spike Lee. Now it's important to note, oftentimes when properties are adapted into television or film, the property is handed over to a writer's team and they adapt the story and present it in another medium. Ronald Wimberly has been quoted as saying, his graphic novel, Prince of Cats, will always remain and stand the test of time. The film is just another interpretation of that story, another work of art. And this is the work of Ronald Wimberly. Aliza Martinez. Aliza Evelyn Martinez is the Eisner Award winning artist for the Marvel series Black Panther, World of Wakanda. She has also illustrated Iron Man X-Men Black Sun, Marvel Age Fantastic Four, Black Panther, X-Men Gold Annual, Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur, Miles Morales Spider-Man, and Fearless, all for Marvel. Omni, Humanoids, Voltron, published by Devil's Do, Heroes, published by NBC, New 52 Batgirl, published by DC Comics, New Crusaders, Riverdale, published by Archie Comics, WWE Superstar, WWE Slam City, Barbie, published by Paper Cuts, Vampire, My Boyfriend Bites, Kung Fu Masters, Quest for Dragon Mountain, published by Learner Publications. Martinez is also a professor at the School of Visual Arts. 
The most rewarding part of Alisa's career is participating in the U.S. State Department's World Speaker Program. She travels to parts unknown to teach comic book workshops and bring the art of storytelling to people who would have no other way of getting such information. She was once in the same position, practicing a craft that she didn't know was a profession. She loves representing her country and her industry. On exhibit, we have Alisa Martinez's very own series, Yume and Ever. Yume and Ever is an original series that introduces a smart, gorgeous team of super teenagers of every race and gender. Alisa reveals their diverse backgrounds and personalities while giving us a glimpse of real-world political confusion and hypocrisy. The series is published under Alisa's own company, A Riot Storm Productions, LLC. You May and Ever, as an independently published series, is only available via Alisa Martinez. And what I mean by that is when you see Alita Martinez at a Comic Con, you can purchase a copy of her book. And this form of distribution, her appearances at Comic Cons all over the world, have allowed her to sell over 15,000 copies of her comic book series. A comic book series that has never been formally distributed through bookstores or comic book shops. And Alita Martinez has been able to do this incredible accomplishment 100% independently. She created the universe of Yume and Ever, a universe that features protagonists of color in the same, for the same reason that she explains herself, her identity. As a woman of African descent and Dutch descent, she found it very necessary to create a comic book series that allowed her to challenge people's perception of each other. Not everyone is who they seem to be, particularly ethnically or racially. It's also important to note as a professional, Alisa Martinez is one of the most prolific, hardest working artists right now in the comic book industry, oftentimes illustrating two, if not three books on a monthly basis for Marvel Comics. It's also important to know that although she is presently a professor at the School of Visual Arts, when she was an undergraduate student herself, she actually stopped attending classes there due to the pressure of being the only woman and oftentimes only person of color in these classes. The level of discrimination and discomfort that she faced was just too much for her. So it is a beautiful cycle, a beautiful full circle to see and learn that today she herself is a professor at the School of Visual Arts. She also shares that the majority of her students at SVA are young women. She has definitely broken that cycle with her art and with her teachings. Our second Eisner Award winning artist in The Power of Color is Afua Richardson. Afua Richardson is an American illustrator best known for her work on the Eisner winning series Black Panther World of Wakanda. Her works influenced the CG team in the making of the film. Other works include the Reader's Choice Award miniseries Genius, written by Mark Bernardin and Adam Freeman, and the American anthology for Attack on Titan for Kodansha. Afua has done various cover work on X Men 92. Captain Marvel, Captain America, and the Mighty Avengers for Marvel Comics, All-Star Batman, Wildstorm for DC Comics, and Mad Max. She is the artist on the sequel to John Lewis and Andrew Aiden's civil rights graphic novel, Run, published through Abrams Books. On exhibition is Afua Richardson, Aquarius, The Book of Mirror. Every culture has a flood myth, tales of catastrophic events ushering in a new age and washing away the remnants of the previous world. These stories have lined the pages of antiquity as far back as 5,000 years. Though they have changed over time, they live immortal in the oral traditions, grimoire, and fairy tales of the shores of West Africa to ancient prefectures of Japan. In Aquarius, the Book of Myrrh, 
Afor Richardson swims into the depths of the mermaid mythos with modern retellings and colorful interpretations of some of the strangest and soggiest legends of human history not often recited. From master of the lake of Lake Biwa in Japan to the emerald hues of the halfway people in Nova Scotia, Afua takes you from coast to coast in search of the stories of the water and how to heal life's blood of our Mother Earth, the ocean itself. In looking at the beautifully rendered original characters from the Book of Myrrh as illustrated and created by Afua Richardson, it's very important to note that Afua is one of the few artists in our exhibition that truly represents the future of comic book storytelling. Afua Richardson, in her latest and newest project, The Book of Myrrh, serves as the writer and the artist. It's very important to identify her as the artist because she takes on all the roles that are usually divided by various creatives in a comic book production. She is the penciler, the inker, and the colorist, by creating her images digitally, she has created a palette, a style that's uniquely her own. And she is able to illustrate and color her original artwork. One thing that is important to share with you all, The Book of Myrrh will be the first graphic novel series that will be introduced as an original multimedia project, as well as being a celebrated illustrator and Eisner Award winning artist, Afua Richardson is also an accomplished musician and vocalist. Accompanying the Book of Myrrh will be a series of original compositions and songs that Afua Richardson is presently writing, composing, and producing. When the completed graphic novel is presented, it will also feature a live musical performance. Therefore, the Book of Myrrh will truly be revolutionary in a positive way of looking at the future of comic books as told and shown by artists from the African diaspora. We conclude the exhibition with my personal contribution to this art show. And that is the work for my independently published series, La Borinquena. Alongside Afua Richardson and Alisa Martinez, I too am the winner of an Eisner Award. I received the Humanitarian Award in 2019 for my philanthropic work, which developed from the series La Borinquena. I had the opportunity in the year 2017, just two weeks after Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico, to have an opportunity to collaborate with DC Comics. They came to me because up to that point, I was the only writer, artist, and publisher of a comic book series that completely dedicated the narrative and work to the history, heritage, and culture of Puerto Rico. La Borinquena, not even one year in publication, would team up with Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman, and other DC Comics superheroes. This anthology was titled Reconstruction, Reminiscing, and Rebuilding Puerto Rico, a 200-page book which was a number one bestseller on Amazon.com in 2018 for four months straight. It also sold close to a quarter of a million dollars in sales and helped us establish the La Borinquena Grants Program. Over the course of the two years that the La Borinquena Grants Program has been in effect, we have awarded $140,000 in grants to local grassroots organizations throughout the island of Puerto Rico. La Borinquena herself is a comic book series that I created to help bring awareness and attention to Puerto Rico. She is an original comic character and patriotic symbol. Her powers are drawn from history and mysticism found on the island of Puerto Rico, bestowed upon her by the Taino mother spirit Atabex and her sons Yukahu and Huracan. Yukahu, the spirit of the seas, and Huracan, the spirit of the hurricanes. They give La Borinquena superhuman strength, the power of flight, 
to control the power of the storms. The artwork that we see on display is a true representation of the collaborative work that I undertake when I produce and publish this series. One of the, pro one of the goals of publishing La Borinquena is to try to bring together as many artists of the Puerto Rican diaspora under the banner of this series. Artists with experience as short as a year to two years in the, in the industry to as prolific as 40 years. When we look at the collection on the wall, we start with the work of George Perez. George Perez is noted as being one of the most prolific creators in the comic book industry, having created close to 70 characters between DC and Marvel Comics, including Marvel's first Puerto Rican superhero, the White Tiger, and DC Comics superhero team, the Teen Titans. He created characters recognize, rec recognizable as Cyborg, Starfire, Raven, and Deathstroke. Alongside the cover created illustrated by George Perez is the back cover of Reconstruction as illustrated by Ken Lashley. That is the image of, of La Borinquena with Superman. Superman, the comic book industry's first and longest lasting superhero comic book series which recently celebrated its 80th birthday in 2018. Alongside the cover art is that of La Borinquena with Wonder Woman, who in 2021 will be celebrating her 80th birthday. Continuing through the wall, we see artwork that originally came from the original first issue of La Borinquena. This artwork consists of artists as Will Rosado, Emilio Lopez, Francisco Javier Rodriguez, Cesar Antometei, Gustavo Vasquez and Ralph Rags Morales with the cover art to the first issue of La Borinquena, which was digitally colored by Emilio Lopez. La Borinquena is a series that's dedicated to philanthropy and social justice. I believe as an artist and storyteller that stories that center around superheroes should also inspire us to do heroic work in our real lives. I'm inspired by the series myself to do the philanthropic work that I do with Puerto Rico. Our hope is that our series inspires others to continue in this fashion to look out for one another and recognize that each and every one of us have an innate power to make a difference and make the world better for all of us. That concludes our exhibition the Color of Power. I thank you all for your time and thank you for supporting the Caribbean Culture Center